everybody and welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel and to the Crumbs and Doily shop here in Soho. Um, Sam and I came over earlier on today with some of the rest of the gang to have a tidy up and a clear out because we have just gone into lockdown 2.0 here in the UK um, and I just feel like everyone needs a bit of a pick me up and I don't know about you but when I'm feeling down I need chocolate. And I'm pretty sure that most of you will agree. And if you don't agree, then I kind of don't believe you because chocolate is key to making yourself feel better. So today I am gonna show you how to make the ultimate chocolate cake. It is a chocolate mud cake. I cannot really believe that we've got, what, like five, six years through um, videos without showing you this recipe. It is absolutely delicious. You guys are gonna love it. Um, it's gonna have a chocolate sponge. It's gonna have chocolate buttercream. It's gonna have a ganache on the outside and it is decadent, indulgent, and it is sure to pick you up. So we are gonna start start over here on the hob and in this saucepan I've got 250 grams of unsalted butter and into that we're going to add 250 grams of dark chocolate now I really recommend going for a 70% something really deep and intense and also some coffee so I've got 180 mils of coffee you can use fresh coffee if you have it fantastic if you don't you just want 180 mils of hot water and you're going to put two tablespoons of instant coffee granules into it now, I know that a lot of you are gonna be thinking that you don't really like coffee. Can you substitute the coffee for something else? But you have to use the coffee, guys. It's part of the recipe and it's not gonna taste like coffee. Coffee is great in your cakes and your brownies because it really intensifies the chocolatiness because it's kind of bitter and it just really makes it super, super chocolatey. So please do stick with it. Now, what we're gonna do is put this over a low heat and we're gonna stir it all the time. We don't want it to catch and burn on the bottom. So just keep stirring until it has all melted. So you might find that towards the end it looks like it's splitting a little bit. That's because we've got water and we've got the fats from the chocolate and the um, butter and they tend to separate but don't worry it will all come together in a little bit. So we're just going to leave that to cool down slightly and in a large bowl you want to start by mixing together four eggs just to break them up. And into that, we're gonna add 150 mils of buttermilk. You can either use buttermilk or sour cream. Both are nice and tangy, and they're gonna make this cake even fudgier than it already is gonna be. But if you don't have buttermilk, you can make a really easy substitute, and I'll put a link in the description box below to a video that Nikki did, um, and she shows you a really great trick on how to make your own buttermilk. So that's gonna go into the bowl, and we'll just whisk that together. And lastly, into this bowl, we're going for three tablespoons of oil. I've got vegetable, but you can use sunflower, anything kind of flavorless. Give that a good mix. And now it's time to add our chocolate mixture here. So it's cooled down slightly, but don't worry, it doesn't need to be cold. What I'm gonna do is pour slowly and whisk at the same time to incorporate it all. And this is already making me feel a whole lot better. It smells amazing. So now we'll go in with some dry ingredients, starting with some caster sugar or granulated sugar. And we've got 430 grams of that, so just whisk that in. And now I'm gonna do the next bit through a sieve. So into my sieve, I'm gonna put in 150 grams of both plain flour and self-raising flour. And then on top of that, we've got 60 grams of cocoa powder, just to make this even more chocolatey. And then we've got three quarters of a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda to give it a little bit of lift. And then a good old pinch of salt, probably around half a teaspoon going in there. And now let's just sift this in and give it a good stir. If you feel like it's looking a little bit lumpy with some like lumps of flour in there, just go back in with your whisk and just give it a gentle stir. We just don't really want to over mix it at this stage. 
And now it is lovely and smooth, we're gonna put it into our tins. So the recipe I'm giving you here is for a seven inch um, cake with four layers, which I appreciate is enormous, <laughs> but I'm gonna give you a few different options in the description box below so that there is something for everyone. You could do a two layer cake, a one layer cake, whatever you like. So of course we need to grease these. So I've got some cake spray here, but you can do this with um, some butter and flour as well. And now we just need to distribute our batter as evenly as we can between the four tins. Now before we bake it, I'm actually just gonna level out each of these because it's a very thick batter and it thickens really, really quickly. And this is a good way of making sure that you've got them all even as well. So we're spreading them out and our tins are gonna be about half full. And now it is time to bake these. So my oven is preheated to 170 degrees C, that is fan assisted. And we're gonna bake them for about 22 minutes, doing the skewer test, poking it in the middle of each tin, because remember, they might be a little bit unequal, so one might bake and the other one's still a little bit gooey, so make sure you test every single one until they come out clean. Okay guys, so once your cakes have come out of the oven, you wanna let them cool down for five minutes only, and then you're gonna turn them out of the tin. If you let your cakes, this goes for any cake, cool down completely in the tin, and then you turn the tin upside down and you try and get it out, it's probably gonna stick and it's gonna crumble and it's gonna break and it's gonna make you cry. So do not do that. And then you wanna let them cool down completely like I have with these. And I've actually put each piece on a little bit of grease proof because it means I can move it around much easier. So now we're gonna get on with making our fillings. So before we make the actual filling, which is the chocolate buttercream, we're gonna make our ganache to go on the outside so that it has time to sort of set and get thick so that we can use it. So into this bowl, uh, well in this bowl, I've got 100 grams of butter and I'm gonna add 200 grams of chocolate. Now this time I've actually gone for a 50% chocolate because that's my kind of personal preference for ganache, but if you wanna go with the same 70%, then by all means do that. Now usually when we make ganache in a microwave, we'd put the cream in as well, but a little tip for you here, we wanna make this nice and thick kind of straight away so we can use it straight away. So I'm gonna melt the chocolate and the butter together and then we're gonna add the cream. So I'm gonna pop this in the microwave 30 seconds at a time until it's fully combined. Now all we're gonna do is pour in 100 ml of double cream and then leave it to sit. And this shouldn't take all that long to thicken up. So now we can get on with making our chocolate buster cream. Very standard, simple chocolate buster cream, starting with 125 grams of soft butter. Remember, it has to be soft when you're making buttercream. Um, and we're just gonna whip it up for about four or five minutes to make it really pale in color, very creamy and very fluffy. So into this, I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt um, because buttercream is really, really sweet. So the salt just kind of kicks through that and salt and chocolate is a perfect combo. So give that a little mix through and now we can go in with some icing sugar. So I've got 225 grams of icing sugar, which I've already sifted. And we're gonna put it in in two halves, beating it really well between each addition. I'm actually just combining my sugar and butter with a spoon first because icing sugar gets everywhere. I'm just not in the mood to be covered in icing sugar today. <laughs> And 
last but obviously not least it's time to add some chocolate so i've got 80 grams of melted chocolate here again i've gone for the 70 percent but whatever you want to do is all right by me so we're going to put it in and fold it by hand This is the queen of the buttercreams. It's absolutely delicious and it's taking all my willpower to not just dive straight in with my face first. But now it is time to get our cake. So, first of all, what we need to do is make them all lovely and level. It's a pretty level cake anyway. They don't rise kind of too rounded on the top. But just to make sure, we get it as level as we can. I've got myself here a serrated knife or a bread knife. Um, I tend not to do this with the leveler because we're not trimming the edges off. The levelers can find it a little bit hard to kind of get in there. So I prefer to use a knife. So I'm just going to very gently slide my knife along the top, doing nice big kind of backwards forwards motions and turning my cake at the same time just to take that top bit of cake off. So just spend your time on this, doing a little bit at a time uh, especially if you've not done this before just go nice and gently and whatever you do do not throw away your cake off cuts because they're a delicious snack and also it's the perfect um, cake recipe to be making cake truffles with and i figure we should probably show you guys how to do that so do stay tuned and i'll try and get a recipe together for you guys but in the meantime let's just get on and level out all of our cakes And now it is my favorite bit other than eating cake and that is decorating cake. So you wanna grab your turntable. If you don't have a turntable, do not despair. As you could see, when we were trimming our cakes, we kind of had them on this paper, which you can spin. This is a really great way of sort of like not having a turntable. But you know those Lazy Susans as well that you get that you put in the middle of your dinner table? I don't actually really know what they're for, but they make great turntables. Anyway, let's get on with decorating. So I've got myself a little board here. You wanna put that on top of your turntable and then you're gonna grab some buttercream. And as usual, we're gonna put a little bit in the middle of our board and that is gonna stick down our first layer of cake. So very gently grab your first layer and pop it in the middle of your board. And now before we start filling with the buttercream, you wanna make sure the buttercream is really soft because if you put stiff buttercream on this cake, it's gonna pull all the crumbs away and it's gonna be an awful mess. So if you feel like your buttercream is a bit too stiff, you can loosen it with a little bit of milk or you can pop it in the microwave for a few seconds at a time until it is lovely and soft. So here we go, a nice big dollop of chocolate buttercream. Now I've taken my buttercream right to the edge of my cake, but I don't want too much to kind of splurge out because we're gonna decorate it with the ganache and I don't want it to mix with it too much. So once you've got it to the edge, smooth it off and then we're gonna put the next layer of cake on. And when you're handling cake, you wanna be really careful that it doesn't crack. So what I do is I make sure that I get as much of my hand on the cake as possible so that none of it's hanging off like this and you'll find that it's actually pretty easy to do. And then we line it up and pop it on. And then we just keep going until we get to the top.
Now before you put your last piece of cake on top, what you wanna do, turn it upside down because this side is gonna be much easier to ice than the crummy side. So again, line it up. Before you push it down, just make sure it's all looking as straight as possible because you can shift it about ever so gently. And there we go. So now we're ready to decorate this. But if you're somewhere warm or if your buttercream's just a bit soft and you feel like it's jiggling all over the place, put it in the fridge for five to 10 minutes just for that buttercream to set a little bit and you'll find it much easier to use the ganache on the outside. So this is a really good consistency. You can see here how it's kind of spreadable. It's not just gonna fall off. And I'm actually gonna do this with the bigger palette knife over here and I'm gonna cover my cake with the ganache. And don't worry too much about trying to get this smooth as we go. We're gonna smooth it off at the end, or maybe you wanna leave it rough, that is totally up to you. So I'm gonna go onto the side and I'm gonna do a little bit of ganache at a time because it's a lot looser than buttercream. So I'm just using my palette knife, but in the same technique as icing a buttercream cake, pushing it backwards and pulling it forwards. So like I said, you can leave this as it is if you want, but if you wanna make it super smooth, grab yourself a cake smoother. Now, apologies guys, I only have this short cake smoother here and I've made an incredibly tall cake, but you can get tall ones of these. Over on cupcakegemma.com we have got both the small and the tall, so I would recommend having both because it is a lot easier to do this uh, <laughs> with the right size smoother, but we'll just give it a go, shall we? So as you can see, as usual, I've got my scraper. Not scraping, we're not scraping, we are smoothing. So I've not got it like this at like a right angle. I've got it very gently, sort of stroking the side of the cake. Cause like I said, we're not scraping, we're smoothing. And I'm using my turntable the whole time so I don't have to move my arm. It's kind of easier. <laughs> And now we're gonna move on to the top. And this is when you wanna grab yourself a bit of kitchen roll or a J cloth, because we wanna make sure that our scraper stays nice and clean. So what we're gonna do is cut the icing from the outside into the middle like so. It is finished, it looks marvelous. It smells absolutely incredible. I think we had better cut into this and have a massive slice of cake because we all deserve it, guys. So here we go, you ready? Oh, golly, look at this. I think I'm gonna have to lie it down on the world's smallest plate. Oh, is there anything better in life than chocolate cake? I don't think there is. We've got the buttercream in the middle there and the ganache on the outside. Ready? Mm -mm -mm. The best thing 
about a mud cake is the fudginess of it. It is melt in your mouth fudge galore. And if you wanna make it even fudgier, I'd recommend making the sponge the day before, leave it overnight and then ice it because it gives the sponge a chance to kind of relax and it gets even more moist. It is divine. And also, if you don't want to faff around with making two different fillings and icings, you can just choose one and fill an ice with the same thing. Mmm, delicious. I hope you love making this cake and I hope you love eating it and I hope it makes you feel a little bit better because guys, it's all gonna be all right. We are in this together. We've got cake for you guys <laughs> and we've got loads more recipes coming up. And if there's particular things you wanna see on this channel that we haven't done before, always put them in the description box below because we love hearing what you guys want um, and we'll come up with recipes for you soon. And obviously it is nearly Christmas. We've got our Christmas selection heading out onto cupcakegemma.com. Um, so do head over there along with all the tools and stuff which are gonna make perfect presents. If you've been eyeing up some turntables or any of the tools like the spatulas, the scrapers, put it on your Christmas list because we've got all of it for you. And we'll be back very soon with another recipe. So enjoy this ultimate chocolate. Mm-hmm.